Hello and welcome back to part two of the Q&A tutorial, the Q&A AI tutorial. This is not a Q&A, we're making a Q&A AI, that's, that's a little bit of a tongue twister. So just a little bit to catch you up. If you haven't seen the first episode, I'd recommend checking that out. It's uh, pretty cool, I think, uh, and you'll probably be a little bit lost if you haven't seen that. But to catch anyone up, um, essentially what we're doing is we are making an AI that can answer our questions that we ask it questions about ideally anything. Um, so essentially what we've done so far, we have our imports, uh, we make a distilbert model, which is a certain type of model that's pretty good with natural language processing. We take a question, format it properly, we then pass it into our model and we get a prediction of an answer. In this case, we asked what color is the sky with the context that the sky is blue. Our model then extracts from this context that the answer should be blue and returns us an answer of blue. Super cool. We then made a function that essentially does that for us, but with less text. And then we can use that function right here. We pass in our model an answer and all of our contexts, in this case, we just have one and we get our answer blue. Super cool. So what we're gonna be doing today is we are actually now going to be able to instead of putting in the context ourselves, you know, this is kind of kind of a cop out. Uh, we're gonna be extracting that from some articles we find over Google search. Uh, and then hopefully our agent will be able to actually use that, basically do its own Google searches and arrive at its own answers and then give us those answers. That's the idea. Let's see how much we can get done. So the first thing we want to do is you might have noticed I, I oh, I think, there we go. I had us import a library in the last episode called HTML to text. We didn't, we haven't used that yet. And we also have requests. So let's actually use those now. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get the links over a Google search. So this search function right here, this is another thing we imported. Where was it? It was the Google search. Um, so this search will essentially just do a Google search for us. Super nice and simple. Um, so we search for what color is the sky say stop at two so we only want two results um, and then we convert this to a list because i believe by default it's a generator um, and that will give us that will give us our link so let's print these links out and see what if this works correctly hopefully it should there we go so these are the two links it gave us what color is the sky very interesting oh blue sky so you see the the information is in here at least um, and another website right here so we can get links. So let's kind of streamline this a little bit, right? We, we get the links. We also want to get the text from it. Um, so we're going to use that HTML to text. So we essentially want to make an object or there's a certain class that we want to create called HTML to text. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we want to then set a few settings. So ignore links to true because we don't care about the links and escape all to true. This is again, just a formatting thing. We just want the text. So now that we have that, we can actually go ahead and get the entire HTML from the web page, like all the all the text. Um, so we do that by doing a request.getLink. So for just for example reference, if I was to do request.get, and then we do like google.com, that does not work because we forgot the HTTP. Yes, it does not let you shorthand it. Okay, so we get a response, uh, but from that we can get the dot text, I believe, to get, yeah. So here's the text of the entire Google web page. You can see there's a lot of weird HTML stuff, JavaScript stuff going on in here. We just want the text, which there's not going to be much of on the homepage of Google, uh, but on other websites there should be. For example, if we were to get this website, we would hope, yeah, so... Let's see if we can find the text. Yeah, see, there's a lot of these HTML tags. These are what we want to get rid of. Oh, Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence. There's some text, right? So we want to get that type of text. So what we can do is we can do HTML conv, uh, just it's what I called this object uh, for conversion, uh, handle the request.txt, and then we're going to append that to our text, right? So we're going through each link and we're getting the text from the actual HTML and we're appending that to text. So let's go ahead and do this. And let's now print this out. Text. 
Cool, so unfortunately it looks like one of these is unavailable for some reason, that is unfortunate. And it looks like this one is kind of working. We have a lot of these new lines um, and it's still quite a bit messy, but we can see we're getting a lot more text now. So this is better. I think we can still do better though. So what we're gonna do is lots of this is in a markdown format. Uh, we are going to convert that to, or at least a markdown like format we're going to convert that to just normal text. So we have taken out the HTML, but there's still some stuff to be done. Here is a little function I nabbed. I actually did not write this myself. Here is the source of that. Uh, cool little gist I found on GitHub. And it should actually convert this sort of format just to normal text. I also wanted to add my own little thing. Uh, just because you see we have a lot of these new lines, we might as well just convert them to spaces to be a little bit cleaner. Um, other than that, it's just running the markdown to text that we have right here. So these two functions should do the bulk of that. So let's actually try what we did up here again. Let's run that. And we have this, we just want to change a couple things. The first thing is maybe we should print out these links just to be clear as to what's happening. And then what we want to do is we just want to format this. So we will now say text negative one. So we get the last thing, the last text we've appended um, and we will use our new formatting function. So format text, text negative one. Uh, so all we do is formatting the text here and let's print out the text. Ideally, it should look a lot cleaner now is the goal. We'll see if that's actually happening. So these are our links. I don't know why this is unavailable. Uh, however, if we look here, we can see, I don't know why there's a little Spanish, but, oh, view in Spanish, I see, I see. Um, we can see that this is much clearer now. It's a lot of just standard text, something that you know we can understand. The light from the sun looks white, but it's really made of all colors of the rainbow. Cool, 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 good to know. Um, and it's looking pretty good. So we've got our text formatted. Let's now kind of streamline this and make functions that let us do this very quickly and easily. So to do that, it's basically going to be the exact same thing we've done so far. Uh, first, we're going to have a query function to just query the pages, right? So this is just doing our search. Um, and this in will be how many links we want. In our case, I'm, I'm just putting five. It's the default. You can put whatever you want, except for I totally just realized that this is slightly incorrect this should just i don't think this needs to be here uh, that should be good we can give it a quick test and say query pages oh what color is the sky let's see let's see there we go we have our five links now we can make one more function to actually do what we did, the whole conversion thing of converting the, oh, didn't mean to do that, <laughs> converting the text or the HTML into standard text. Uh, and that's exactly what we'll do right here. This is what we just did up here, except for now it's in a function, very fancy. So let's try all this out, right? So we'll have our question. Uh, again, we'll say, what color is the sky? Now let's get the context, right? So we will essentially use our question that we ask our AI. And the question that we ask will then be used to make a Google search, right? The Google search will get several links. We will take those links, grab the HTML, and then convert them all to text. So let's do that. That's what we just did right there with those functions. So now we can say context query, query to text question. We're just going to grab two, um, two articles for now, or two websites. Uh, and this text we grab will be used as our context as input to our model. And hopefully this will work. Uh, it, so, so spoilers, it will work. I've tried it. Uh, and now we can actually, now that we have our context, right? This is all our text. We can actually predict using that model. So uh, predict the answer, give it our model, our question. Uh, and then our context. Let's run this, except for I'm not printing anything. Let's print out the actual prediction and see if this works. This is kind of the whole start to finish. Lighter blue or white? Not bad, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take it. 
I'll take it. Um, so just again, one more sort of going over what we did because it was a lot really fast. Got a question. We get the context by doing a Google search on our question, get the most relevant articles, or at least the first few links, convert those to text, take out all the messy markup stuff or markdown stuff. Um, and we're using that as our context. We put both of those into our model and then we get a prediction, which in our case is lighter blue or white. Very nice, very nice. So we just asked our model a question and got an answer. Super cool. Uh, I think, I don't know, my, my first time I sort of saw something like this happen, it, it kind of was like, wow, hopefully, hopefully uh, maybe you're getting the same effect. Uh, maybe not, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> but let's go ahead and let's clean all this up and put an end to this awesome project. So we're gonna make, as you might have guessed, another function to streamline this. Um, and it's essentially gonna do what we just did right here. We're just gonna call it Q to A, question to answer. We pass in a model of question, the amount of context we want. It will grab our context for us, run the prediction, and then return that prediction. So now what we should be able to do is use this just like we did here. So Q to A, what color is the sky? I don't know what, oh, I forgot to pass in the model, nice. We will leave that to two. Hopefully we should get the same thing as right here because we're doing the same thing, yep. Lighter blue or white, there we go. So we have our model. I do wanna make a nice little interface to use it. Uh, so maybe you can show your friends and have them input their own questions. I actually, uh, I tested this on my brother's biology homework. It's uh, like freshman level biology, right? Uh, freshman level in, in um, so first year in university, and it got over half of them right. So I, I was pretty impressed. Um, you know, maybe maybe can help you with your homework too. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, don't do that. Bad, uh, yeah, don't do that. Probably because you're not gonna get the right answer. Uh, well, actually, I guess it does get it right sometimes. But anyway, this is what we, so you can do this in Jupyter Notebooks and Google Colab, it's pretty cool. We can set up a little text widget. You'll see what that does in a button. And essentially, when we click the button, we will just run whatever text is in the uh, text field through our Q to A function, and then we will print out the answer. Super simple question, okay. So I have a few questions I wanna ask you. So let's again, just make sure this works. What color is the sky? Hopefully we get the same thing. There we go, lighter blue or white. Okay, let's ask it another question. Um, I had, okay, so let's ask who is the current president, oh, president of the U US? We're just gonna try a few things, have fun with our model. Other than that, we're, we're done with the project, but uh, you know, let's try it, let's try out some things. Disclosure special counsel investigation. That is unfortunately incorrect. Um, it was a good try though, it was a good try. Uh, <laughs> so as I said, you know, it doesn't get everything right. Um, a large part of the problem though is not just the model, but also the fact that we're just grabbing a bunch of random contexts, passing them all in, and then if one doesn't show up more than once, we're just grabbing a random answer. So the right answer might have even been in our con uh, been in one of our possible answers. Um, so there's lots of things you could do to improve this. Let's maybe say who was the first president pre pre president of the U.S. Let's see if we can get this right, I don't know. Um, <sighs> Lieutenant General U.S. Army. Was was he George Washington Ar er? Army rank? Oh, he was in the army, was he? Yeah, army rank? Apparently other people have searched it, so I don't feel as stupid. Um, General of the army armies of the United oh yes because he was the president I, I feel like an idiot now okay um close enough close enough <laughs> I'll take it so that's the end of this project I think it was super cool um to be honest there's a lot more that can be done here this was a super simple version of this um I mean it wasn't simple it was quite complicated but we did abstract away lots of the more tedious stuff um for one training these models can be a little bit of a pain but it can also be interesting and a good learning experience. 
Um, there's also another data set, if you want to try and improve this yourself, called the natural question answer data set. Google, oh yeah, here we go. There's recently a really cool Kaggle competition based around this. There might be another one going on right now. I'm not actually sure. Uh, this is actually trained on Wikipedia articles, so you could probably do a lot better uh, using something like this. Uh, again, you could also get scores from the models and sort the answers by scores. There's lots of things you could do to improve this. This is a very sort of naive way of doing this. Um, but I think it's really cool. If you want to see more tutorials on this in the future, we can certainly dive in deeper. Just again, leave a comment, like, so I know this is what you guys find interesting. Thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope this project has been enjoyable and a good learning experience for you. Thank you very much.